This video covers setting up ArcSight ESM to use MISP as a threat intelligence feed. We'll talk about what MISP does, how ArcSight uses MISP, and then walk through installation and configuration of MISP with ArcSight ESM. MISP is a free open source threat intelligence sharing platform. From the MISP project site, it's a platform for gathering, sharing, storing and correlating indicators of compromise, as well as other threat intelligence information. With MISP, users can both consume and produce threat intelligence data. You can consume threat intelligence data with lists of indicators of compromise, like malicious file hashes, email addresses, and websites. You can produce threat intelligence data by sharing technical characteristics of malicious activity that you're seeing in your environment. MISP is MITRE ATT&CK compatible, and the indicators of compromise are mapped to MITRE ATT&CK techniques. MISP is community-driven threat intelligence, and there are more than 6,000 organizations that are currently using it. How is ArcSight ESM using MISP, and what would a deployment look like? First, you'll need a MISP instance to connect to. You have two options, either connect to a community instance or deploy your own instance. Since MISP is open source software, there are a large number of organizations who are maintaining and operating MISP instances. Visit the first URL to find a list of known existing public instances. You can also deploy your own private instance on any standard Linux distribution. The second URL has a link to the MISP software, as well as a link to VMware virtual images, which can be used for testing purposes. For our installation, we'll be using the Circle MISP instance. Whether you're using a MISP community instance or a MISP local instance, the setup process and procedure is exactly the same. In ESM, you'll need to have the Threat Intelligence Platform package imported and installed. This package includes content to address threat intelligence use cases like ransomware, botnet activity, phishing, and dangerous browsing. This package is included with ESM 7.2, but is available for previous ESM releases and can be downloaded from the ArcSight Marketplace. You'll also need to install the model import connector for MISP on a separate 64-bit Linux or Windows system. The model import connector connects to the MISP instance and uses the REST API to retrieve threat intelligence indicators of compromise, or IOCs. Once the model import connector retrieves this data, it processes it and sends it securely to ESM. ESM then stores the IOCs in a number of active lists that are used by the Threat Intelligence Platform content. The model import connector keeps these lists up to date as the IOC data changes on the MISP instance. Here's a list of the indicators of compromise that the model import connector retrieves from the MISP instance. There are traditional indicators like addresses and domains and more advanced indicators, like file hashes, URLs, and email addresses. Let's walk through the installation and configuration of MISP with ArcSight ESM. I have a fresh installation of ESM 7.2 in my lab that I'll be working with. Under the Packages tab, in the ArcSight Foundation group, I can see that the Threat Intelligence Platform package has been imported and installed. Under Rules, I can see that the Threat Intelligence Platform Rules group has been linked to the Real-Time Rules group, so the use case content has been enabled. Under Active Lists, I can see the lists that map to the IOCs that the Model Import Connector will retrieve and update from the MISP instance. The TTL, or Time to Live, for entries in these active lists is set to 30 days by default. This means that the entries on the active list 
will age out after 30 days. Based on your use case, this can be modified to a longer duration. If we click to show entries on any of the active lists, we can see that they're blank. We can also look at the Reputation Data Overview dashboard and see that the lists are empty. Now that we've verified that the content is ready to go, let's install the MISP model and port connector. Since this is a lab environment, I'll be installing the model import connector on the ESM server. For production deployment, you'll want to install the model import connector on a separate 64-bit Linux or Windows system. Let's start the install. I'll speed up the installation and stop at the parameters configuration screen. At the parameter screen, we'll need to enter the MISP URL and authorization key. I'm using the circle MISP instance, so I'll log in there to get the authorization key. Once I log in, I'll click on Event Actions and Automation, and I'll see the authorization key. I'll copy and paste that into the parameter screen. I'll also copy and paste the URL into the MISP URL parameters field. The MISP URL will vary depending on if you're using a community or local instance. I'll speed up the rest of the installation where I specify the destination, connector name, and service setup. Before we start the connector, let's look at the agent.properties file. By default, the connector collects events starting one month prior to the installation date. This parameter can be changed by modifying the start.date field in the agent.properties file. The connector can only collect up to six months of events from the installation date. If the start.date field is set for a period longer than six months, the default time of one month will be used. You'll also want to modify the Java heap memory. Instructions for doing this are in the Model Import Connector Guide. Since this is a lab environment, I'll skip this step. Next, I'll start the connector and we'll finish the configuration in the ESM console. There are two final things we need to do to finish the configuration of the MISP connector. First, we need to right-click to configure the connector and set the model import user. This must be a user with console administrative privileges. I'll use the admin user and we'll click apply to save this. And finally, we need to start the import by right-clicking the connector and selecting send command, model import connector, and start import. In the viewer panel, you should see a response received status and a message that the model import is started. When we refresh the active list we opened earlier, we can see it start to populate. We can also go back to the Reputation Data Overview dashboard and see this update. These steps confirm that the model import connector is populating the IOC active lists from the MISP instance. Next, let's generate some test events to verify that the Threat Intelligence Platform content is working. Since this is a lab environment, I don't have any devices generating events, but I do have a Test Alert Smart Connector installed and registered to ESM. I'll use that to simulate events and verify that the content is working. The use case that I'll be testing is around suspicious and malicious file hashes. I want to know when any files or processes run that match any suspicious hash entries on the IOC active list being populated from MISP. You'll need third-party software to detect this activity, such as Microsoft Sysmon or an endpoint detection and response solution. The Smart Connector will collect these events and send them to ESM, where the Threat Intelligence Platform content 
will address my use case. The Smart Connector and Threat Intelligence Platform content are both product and vendor agnostic, so any device you've deployed will trigger the content. Testing the content is very easy with the Test Alert Smart Connector. I'll go to the active list and open one of the entries in the Inspect Edit panel. I'll copy the hash value for the entry and go to the Test Alert Smart Connector interface. When I scroll down, I can look at the fields under File and see the File Hash Common Event Format field. I'll paste the hash value into this field and send 10 events to ESM. This will simulate a device generating these events. I'll go back to the Viewer panel and open up an Active Channel to view all of the events and activity. The Live Active Channel is a default continuous Active Channel that will show us both base events received from devices as well as correlated events. Here we can see the 10 simulated base events that we sent with the Test Alert Smart Connector. Note that the device vendor and device product fields are empty. There is the suspicious file hash activity correlated event. Let's open it in the Inspect Edit panel. When we look at the generator fields on the correlated event, we can confirm that this is the Threat Intelligence Platform content and that it's working. When investigating suspicious or malicious files, the Threat Intelligence Platform content includes an integration command to the VirusTotal website. The integration command will pass the file hash value to the site and allow you to easily continue your investigation. I tested one use case around file hashes, but you can follow the same testing process for use cases around the other IOC active lists being populated from MISP. This video covered setting up ArcSight ESM to use MISP as a threat intelligence feed. We talked about what MISP does, how ArcSight uses MISP, and then walked through installation and configuration of MISP with ArcSight ESM. Thank you for watching this video.